you're definitely going to have on the south shore a lot harder time catching a really big fish. Montauk, you might have a better shot a little more out east, but in this area, you, the open beaches have been very tough with big fish on lures. Inlets are better. Hard moving water with bucktails and lures that go deep is even better. How many people here are bucktail fishing? Oh, we got a lot of them. What's the art of a bucktail? Slow, slow. Let's get into bucktails for a minute. Bucktails to me are the greatest lure ever made. I would take a bucktail over any other lure just because of the way it's fished. There's multiple things you can do with a bucktail that you can't do with any other lure. And number one is you can fish it at night and no one has a clue what the hell you're doing or where you are. That's even better. So let's get into bucktails. Bucktails represent everything. So head design becomes important. How many guys like smiling bills? Hmm. I think smiling bills are the worst bucktail ever made. <laughs> This is what a bucktail does. Because a bucktail is center eye mounted, it does something no other lure does. It makes a U-turn in the tide. When the line gets straight, the lure turns around. It does a 180, it flutters, and it rises. Home run. If you can do that in front of a fish, you'll catch it most of the time. So how do you get that in front of a fish? Well, the size of a bucktail versus the current is very important. So you can make the bucktail, all bucktails you can mimic the bait and mimic it very well. If you, if you have a big bucktail, if you have big bait, you can go with a very long pork rind and a big bucktail. But what do you do if the water's shallow? Now you can't use a three ounce bucktail. So with bucktails, you can adjust. You can cut pork rind. Almost all the bucktails I use with pork rind, I cut with a razor blade. Some of you guys use different uh, trailers on bucktails. I use, you know, worms and all kinds of different stuff. But I like pork rind personally because it doesn't get destroyed and you can use it forever. You can use the pork rind forever. Red pork rind makes the lure smaller at night. So if you put red on, red disappears quicker in the water column. So you can use a much bigger bucktail that's red and make it appear much smaller in profile. So when you're, when you're fishing a bucktail, how many of you guys jig a bucktail? The art of fishing a bucktail, if you want to catch the most fish, you want a strong moving tide, night's better than the day, the harder the tide moves, the better. If you can position where the fish are, if you can catch your bucktail and make the lure turn where the fish are, you'll catch a fish almost every time. To do that, you've got to move around. So you make short cast, longer, 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 and it sweeps. As the lure sweeps down the angle, it makes a turn and rises. If you can, if, a lot of you guys that you fish uh, the braided lines with it, Okay, braided lines you can fish a much lighter lure, but there's an advantage to fishing very heavy lines too. With 50 pound test, you can fish a three ounce lure the way braid can fish a one and a half. It floats the lure, so you can do a lot more. So if you're really fishing a, a strong inlet with bucktails, there's times where you should have two rods or two spools of line. You should have braid and you should have heavy mono. Heavy mono will do stuff that no braided line can possibly do. It can float your lure. And when you float a big lure in a tide, you'll have a much better chance of catching a very big fish because your strike zone over the bottom is much longer. Is, will it float it due to the 